Not all worlds are created equal in scrap mechanic survival. The major points of interest always spawn in the same spots, but the terrain and biomes around them is randomly generated. Which biomes you have nearby your starting base can determine how easy or how hard it will be to progress through the game. I'm Meteor Milton, and in this video I'm going to show you the 7 things to look for when starting a new survival world in Scrap Mechanic. If you do not find this video helpful, please click the like button and consider subscribing for more videos like this. Also I do stream over on Twitch, link for that is down in the description below. Let's get started. So for anybody that's watched my Mediocre Mechanic series, this world might look familiar to you. This is the world that I started about a month or month and a half ago, and I started playing on it by myself to do a complete fresh playthrough. And what I did was I basically just started a world, jumped in and started playing it. I didn't look around at all, but what I ended up finding was when I made it to the mechanic station, which is the first major point of interest you're going to go to after you leave the spaceship, and it's also the spot where I think most people probably start building their first base just because it's convenient because you can make all the bots, like the craft bot, the refined bots and stuff, inside of it. And everything else is nearby, like the trader's down the street, the, the first packing station is down the street. But what I ended up finding was when I came down here, the only thing that I have nearby that's actually helpful is water. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a different world that we have that we started probably around the same time that just has, in my opinion, probably a god tier spawn, world spawn, because it has pretty much every major biome that we need nearby. So let's hop over to that world and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about and what to look for when you're starting a new world. Okay, I've hopped over to the survival multiplayer world that we started around the same time I started my solo world. And as you're going to notice, we're in the same pot spot we were on the other map, but this map looks wildly different. So one thing you're going to notice, there's no water across there. But what you will see is there's lots of buildings nearby. And what we do have back here is the number one thing you definitely want to make sure you have nearby, wherever you're starting your base, whether it's near the mechanic station or somewhere else, is you want to have a water supply because you need water to water your farms. And setting up an automated watering system like the simple one we have here is definitely a must have if you want to spend less time managing the farm and more time doing other stuff. So the number one thing you want to look for is water. Typically there will be some type of body of water relatively close by to the mechanic station. But like I said, the world's randomly generated. So it might be that you have water behind it. You might have water in front of it. There should be water somewhere nearby it. If there's no water nearby where you want to set up, you probably want to go back in and recreate your and choose another world to start on because without having water, it's going to be very tough to grow your farm. Now the second thing that I think is really important and the one thing that I don't have on my single player world which was what made it very it made it much harder than playing on this world was we have no I had no large ruins on that world. So when I went to the mechanic station I looked around I couldn't see a building within like view distance render distance. The closest buildings were probably a couple hundred meters, maybe 500 to 1000 meters out in that direction from the mechanic station. So anytime I wanted to go looting, I had to run run over there or drive my car over there and it just took forever. I would only have time to loot like one or two buildings. Maybe uh, sometimes only one building before I had to come back to manage the farm. Now in this world, you can see we have, there's a big building down here. There's a big building here. There's one here and there's one here. So that's four large ruins within walking distance in the mechanic station. So that makes, what the reason you want to look for those is because they provide you with tons of loot, which is the loot crates that are inside of it, the, the ruin chests. Also, there's going to be hay bots in them, which can provide you with scrap metal, component kits, and stuff like that. So that's the second thing you want to look for. The third thing you want to look for, which we just so happen to have over here, and which I think is probably important early on, especially if you're not trying to grow a lot of um, crops, is a large wheat field. So one thing you're going to notice in these large wheat fields, these farm areas, is there's going to be a lot of corn and there's going to be a lot of cows. Now the reason those two things are important is because if you break the corn and feed it to cows, they will give you milk. Milk fills up your thirst bar, which as you can see, my thirst bar is already pretty low, and I just happen to have some milk here. So milk is definitely going to be your best friend early on because you don't have to grow it, you don't have to defend it, and it fills up your thirst bar, and your thirst bar tends to go down much faster than your hunger bar. So the third thing you want to look for after you look for water and after you look for large ruins is to make sure that you have a, a corn, a wheat field nearby. Now it doesn't have to be this big. This thing's actually pretty enormous, but anything that's even close to this size will be decent because you'll end up having tons of corn in it. As you can see, there's another one over here actually. Right here, this one's smaller, but it still has, you can see how much corn's in there, and there's usually cows wandering in it. You just have to make sure that you kill the hay bots because they will end up killing the cows that are in there. One thing you want to look for is an ember forest. So this ember forest, we cut down a lot of it. You can get a decent amount of embers back at the starting spawn area, but that's not going to last you very long if you're trying to make glass or you're trying to upgrade your metal. So a large ember forest like this, which they do randomly spawn around the map, definitely a nice to have nearby it's not a necessity like water is or maybe even like the large ruins or the cornfields but the closer the ember forest is to you the better because it's going to be easier to find yourself embers which 
the further away, like obviously the further away you get, the more likely there's going to be possibly farm bots inside of them, because farm bots do spawn inside of them. So you want to look for an ember forest close by. And what we're going to do is we're going to drive over here real quick because the next one on our list is going to be the oil pond. And we're going to look for a desert biome. So let's drive one over there. I'll actually just stay in here just to show you how close the, the oil pond is to where we're starting out. It's only about a, probably, a, I think it's a one minute drive. I timed it. And this is the oil pond that I built, that I did a video on where I built the oil rig, fancy oil rig. You don't need something like that. You can basically just plop a chest down there and put a vacuum pump on it with a switch or a button. Probably a switch. You want it to just be constantly running. But you definitely want to have an oil pond. You want to have a desert biome with an oil pond in it because not all desert biomes have oil ponds. On the, the solo world I have, there is a desert biome right next to the mechanic station. It does not have an oil pond in it. This one I think actually has two oil ponds. So as you can see, this is what you're looking for. You're looking for the desert biome, which has no grass. It just looks like it's sand. And there's a big oil pond, which I have my little rig set up in there. And there's another one down here, actually. So that you we want that because then you can automate gas collection. Now we do have a bunch of beacons here. So next up on our list is going to be a chemical pond. And there just happens to also be a chemical pond around here. So as you can see, we're not that far from the mechanic station. And I will drive back to it towards the end and show you all like exactly how far each one of these biomes is away away from where we've started. It's, it was actually pretty insane because we just plopped in and started it. We didn't even go looking around. We just got really lucky. Also, there's another huge ember forest right here. So we have a lot of embers nearby. And that's going to be really helpful if you're trying to, like I said, if you're trying to upgrade your farm or your vehicles and you want to have them made out of metal 2 or metal 3 because you need embers for those. You also need embers to make glass, I believe. So we got to drive through this forest, which I've driven through this enough times that I've kind of can navigate it pretty well. So then over here is going to be, num the next one on our list is going to be a chemical pond. That bot just went flying. Now the chemical pond is obviously used to get chemicals. You can get it the same way you get water or the same way you get get oil. You just drop a chest, you just place a chest down there, put a vacuum pump on it, suck the chemicals up. Chemicals are used in various crafting recipes, probably mainly concrete. You need it to make concrete. So you want to make sure you have a chemical pond nearby. That's like I said, this is uh this is probably along the lines of the Ember Forest. It's not like a must must have, but it's definitely something if you can have it really close by, it would definitely be something to look forward to. And then next on our list is going to be good old cotton. So cotton's a little bit further away than this, so I'm gonna skip ahead until I get to the cotton. But like I said, when I get back to the I'm gonna get back to the mechanic station and show you how far all of them are from the mechanic station to uh to each one of them. Okay, so we're approaching the autumn biome, and of course we're passing another ember forest. So, like I said, this map was actually probably one of the better ones that I've that we've seen. Here's an autumn biome. What you're gonna be looking for is you're gonna be looking for trees that are orange and yellowish mainly. If if there's the less green, the better. That means there's gonna be cotton in it. Of course, you need cotton to make seeds. You need cotton to unlock cosmetics. Uh, cotton. They actually added cotton seeds to the trader because cotton was sometimes on some maps not spawning nearby. But we're actually pretty close to the trader, which is where we're going to head next. So if you can find an autumn biome close by, that would definitely be helpful. Again, it's just so you want to convenience things so you don't have to travel that far. And like I said, the this that that's probably that's an optional one, not that that not hugely important. And then last but certainly not least is going to be what kind of terrain do you have around your tra around the trader? So the trader is in this mountain here. It's behind. It always spawns directly behind the the vegetable packing station, which you can see right there. It's on the other side of this mound. And what I'm looking for when I'm looking for this is I want a flat terrain. So as you can see, we'll like it is pretty flat. So we'll leave here and drive over to the vegetable packing station. Now I've seen on our main map the one that I played the first survival world on. There was a massive lake back here, which made it somewhat painful if you're if I was trying to transfer lots of crops over here. And then I've seen, actually, I've seen another world. One of my kids was playing on a world where the the terrain between the packing station and the trader was such a steep slope that he couldn't even drive his car up it. So we ended up just starting him in a new world because it was like, it was just impossible. He had to walk all the stuff up there. So as you can see, the trader is directly behind the vegetable packing station. And in this case, this is almost a perfectly flat drive over here. There's no water to drive around. If I go out here, I just, all I have to do is either go left or right around this tree. And then it's a pretty straight shot, other than some bots that are in here. Pretty straight shot over here, outside of crashing into that rock. And I could probably move hundreds of hundreds of crops over here, like we've done in the past, without any issues. So those are the seven things you want to look for. 
And like I said, one one key thing you might want to do is I use notice as you may have noticed, we I put down beacons where all the major points of interest are outside of the ember forest because we have so many ember forests nearby. So I have one over at the chemical where the chemicals are, one at the oil pond, we have one at the the cotton plant. We also marked uh where the caged farmers are. So Caged farmer, typically the autumn biomes will have a caged farmer in them, and oftentimes the large ember forest will have a caged farmer in them as well. You need those to trade in with the trader. So what we're going to do is real quickly before we end this, we're going to hop in here. I'm just going to get inside the mechanic station. We're going to open up our log book, show you our beacon. So the chemical pond that we went to is 882 meters away. The oil is 1,100 meters away. The cotton is about 1,300 meters away. And then obviously we can see, I can see water from... The mechanic station out the back so we have water out there and then the other thing was the large ruins that are nearby so we have four large ruins two on each side which is amazing in addition to the other ones that are down the street and then the the ember forest there's ember forest straight ahead there there's ember forest over by the cotton so we have tons of embers nearby also and then last but certainly not least we have the the trader the train around the trader is very flat so it's very easy to move back and forth on that so anyway Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you're new to the game or you're just starting out or maybe you're just looking to start a new world because you've done everything on your old worlds, if you want to try to make it so it's as least stressful as possible, have probably as easy going as possible so you don't have to actually worry about stuff like uh, spending more time than necessary, those are the things you want to look for. In order of importance, I would say water. Definitely you need to have water nearby so you can end up either watering the crops by hand or hopefully setting up an auto watering system pretty quickly. You want to have large ruins nearby so you don't have to go too far to end up looting them because each one of those is going to have probably between like six and ten green loot crates as well as maybe sometimes two to four large uh, the ruin chests, the large green chests. And they're also going to have maybe six to eight haybots in them. So you're going to get tons of scrap metal, tons of component kits, and also tons of loot from those crates and from the ruin chests. You're also going to have a wheat field so you can get corn to feed to cows and keep your thirst up so you don't have to constantly be worrying about farming nonstop. You want to have a chemical pond and an oil pond nearby so you can use them to craft. Obviously, you need oil to craft gas. You can get oil from the water, but it's much more efficient to just set up an oil oil collection system so you can just turn it into gas and get basically more gas than you'll ever use. Again, chemicals you need to make concrete and some other things. And then cotton, which is down here for us. You need cotton to make, I believe cotton is used to make, well, it definitely used to make seats, right? So one of the main things that one of the th things that could hold you up is making a seat for your car. So you definitely need cotton for that. I don't know if cotton's used for anything else. And then I know chemicals are used for embers are used for metal, and then chemicals are used to make the the first level concrete. So that could be a roadblock there in, in terms of upgrading your scrap stone. And then of course the the trader, which the trader just happens to be right next to the to the left of that cotton field. We have a pretty flat surface over there, probably as good as a spawn as you can get. I don't think there could be a better spawn than this, honestly, unless these things were closer. I was doing a bunch of test worlds recently, testing some stuff out, and I did have like cotton right next to the mechanic station. So the world is completely randomly generated outside these major points of interest. The mechanic station will always be in the exact same coordinates on the map. It'll just be the train between it and the spaceship. Could look wildly different. You may have four buildings here. You may have zero. You might have seven or eight buildings. I mean, I don't know. It could be crazy. Um, and then a couple of other things which I didn't mention, but they can tend to kind of spawn. And I this is actually... Um, the water has glue in it. You can get the clams from the clams to get glue. And then this this place also, uh, funny enough, did have, in addition to all these extra cows over here, pretty sure there's beeswax up here too. Yeah, so there's a big beeswax spawn. So those things aren't super important. Be there's also beeswax over there. But like I said, this map just happens to be probably, we randomly loaded into it, just started playing on it together, and it just happened to be a super, super like God's here spawn. So we definitely had fun on it. And uh, yeah, we'll probably play on it again in the future. But anyway, if you found the video helpful, make sure you hit the like button. If you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe button so you never miss any more Scrap Mechanic videos that I put out. I put out several a week, every week. If you want to see some live gameplay, you can head on over to Twitch. Link for that is down in the description below. I stream probably three to five days a week, depending on the week. I've been playing tons of Scrap Mechanic lately, testing out some mods that we're working on for survival. And last but not least, if you want to support the channel even more, you can hit the link for my Patreon down there and become a super fan. That would be greatly appreciated. Definitely not necessary, but every little bit helps keep the channel going. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.